Hello, Mr. Bedman. My name is Hayden Stewart, and you have no idea as to who I am, but I can tell you that I've been an extremely passionate fan of hockey and the NHL for as long as I can remember. I'll start off by saying that you obviously have a very impressive resume. You graduated from Cornell as well as NYU's law school, and you eventually became the first commissioner in NHL history on February 1st, 1993. I wasn't even alive at that time, and to top off your impact on the sport, you were inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame just last year in 2018. Over the years, you've helped the NHL grow into a multi-billion dollar business, which was worth less than half a billion dollars when you took over as commissioner. Despite the NHL's undeniable success over the past two and a half decades, I still have a bone to pick with you, Gary. So here's some advice from a random guy who has no idea what your day-to-day -day routine is like. Your emphasis on growing the game has been prevalent throughout your tenure, particularly by relocating and expanding into the Southern United States. I appreciate the sentiment and I completely agree that it's so important to grow the game in non-traditional markets. I just think there's some inconsistencies with some of your other decisions in the NHL. The elephant in the room here is that there have been three work stoppages since you've been in charge, resulting in two half seasons lost in both 1994-95 and again in 2012-13, as well as an entire season lost in 2004-05. I fully understand that there are two sides to all of these labor disputes, that being you, the NHL, and the NHL Players Association. But how can a business expect to grow, any business for that matter, when there are work stoppages once, sometimes even twice, every decade? This is a relevant topic again because come September this year, both the NHL and the NHLPA have the option of terminating the final two years of the current CBA. Considering the amount of money that has been lost in all three of these work stoppages, have you and the organization learned its lesson yet? As I've already pointed out, the NHL has grown considerably since you took over. And you yourself, you love to bring up every once in a while when you're speaking publicly. But at the same time, that's just kind of how capitalism works and economic growth is kind of a given for the top hockey league in North America and the rest of the world for that matter. So yes, the NHL is continually growing but you conveniently leave out the part where the NHL is still number four in North American pro sports behind the NFL, the MLB, and the NBA. If you take a look at the NHL's economic growth relative to its direct competitors, it pales in comparison and this growth that you boast about becomes suddenly far less impressive. As a matter of fact, you were senior vice president of the NBA prior to joining the NHL and these are two organizations that I would like to compare and contrast here. In doing so, I'm suggesting that you in the NHL could probably learn a lot from what Commissioner Adam Silver and the NBA are up to recently. Now, from an economic standpoint, the NBA is number three among North America's sort of four big professional sports leagues. It's still behind the MLB in the NFL. However, it is growing at a rapid pace and faster than any of the professional sports leagues in North America. It's entirely plausible and probably even likely that the NBA will surpass the NFL and the MLB one day. I think much of this growth can be attributed to the marketing of the league and its teams, specifically by putting the NBA's star players at the forefront. I truly believe that sports fans fall in love with their favorite team, not because of the franchise itself, but because of a particular player or even a handful of players on the team. Fans of the Washington Capitals don't support them because of owner Ted Leonsis, but rather Ovechkin is a great hockey player. And I understand that basketball and hockey are two very different sports, namely in that players like LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard can completely change the fortunes of an NBA team as long as they have a decent supporting cast. In hockey, Connor McDavid is the best player in the world right now, and even he's only been able to carry the Edmonton Oilers to the playoffs once in four years. While this is just one of many differences between hockey and basketball, this should not change the way that the NHL approaches in marketing and promoting its league. A player like P.K. Subban gets shunned and even traded for being a larger than life personality, yet lots of other players get praised for being boring, reserved human beings. Personalities like P.K. Subban should be embraced 
and more players should even be encouraged to act like themselves as opposed to what the NHL wants them to be. I can't be the only one who's sick and tired of the NHL's traditional values creating a very specific archetype for the type of behavior and the personality of a hockey player. This is an archetype that creates such strict boundaries that if a player doesn't perfectly align with it, they're looked at negatively rather than just being embraced for who they are. This is a mentality that I think turns away current fans, new fans, and even potential fans, which undermines your efforts to grow the game. We're beginning to see a huge wave of young superstars in the NHL, which I believe is an indicator that the league also needs to start changing. Now let me reiterate that I'm fully aware of your position as the voice in the face of the NHL. Meaning that, well, there's a lot of people involved in the decisions and the overall culture of the league. However, you're the boss and you've been in charge of the NHL for over 26 years now, which makes it kind of hard to imagine that you weren't a major factor in creating and constructing this culture. But I'm sure you understand that as the spokesperson of a multi-billion dollar sports league, you're going to face the majority of criticism thrown towards the NHL. When Toronto Raptors president Masai Ujiri said that basketball could one day overtake hockey as Canada's top sport, he was absolutely not out to lunch. You may have disputed this on the Hockey Night in Canada podcast, saying that hockey is the heart and soul of Canada, but sometimes things do change over time. Canada is an increasingly more diverse country and from a financial standpoint, basketball is far more accessible. Basketball may not surpass hockey as Canada's top sport during your tenure as the NHL's commissioner, but your decisions now impact the future of hockey, which may or may not prove you wrong in the end. Not only do things sometimes change over time, but change is often necessary and it's about time you and the NHL realize this. So when you're negotiating the next CBA with the Players Association, I don't expect your tactics to change and fans will be angry at you, but please just do what's best for the sport I and many others love.